Hey everyone, this is Georgia from iMore. Welcome to our weekly show focused on everything iPhone and iPad. From news and views to help and how to's, this is iPhone and iPad Live. Tonight's episode of iPhone and iPad Live is brought to you by Audible. Please visit audiblepodcast.com slash iMore. That's I-M-O-R-E. Audiblepodcast.com slash iMore for your free audiobook download. It's March 7th, 2012, and joining me tonight is the driving force behind App Covey, David Barnard. Hi. Hey. <laughs> it's good to be here. This has been quite a day. I think this is going to be quite a show. And Excited. joining me is the editor-in-chief of iMore, Renee Ritchie. Hey, Georgia, how are you doing? I'm good, Renee. I'm good. I'm good. I'm excited. Nice. Yeah, we had, uh, we had a bit of a show today. This is like the Super Bowl and the Oscars of springtime gadgets all rolled into one. I think that's fair. It's, it's, I think it's pretty good. It's the biggest geek day of this part of the year, at least. I don't know if it's yeah. the biggest. Oh, that's again, right. The Galaxy Note premiere was probably... Oh, holy hell, that <laughs> phone. That is the scariest phone I have ever seen. All right, I don't want to get I you I thought off it topic. was actually like from The Onion. I thought it was a spoof <laughs> when I first saw it. Nice. Did you guys yeah, get that's... to watch the show? David, did you get to see the show at all? I haven't, I haven't watched the whole thing yet. Uh, I, I got started on it, but, uh, you know, kids, family, <laughs> work. <laughs> hardly worked at all today. I mean, yeah, it is, it is a pretty crazy day. What about you, George? Have you seen any of it? I saw most of it. I okay. saw most of it. And uh, yeah, certain parts. I Okay. It was really hard for me, though cognitively I knew Steve was not going to be on the show, but to see, to not see Steve walk out was really kind of sad. Well, he didn't do the la- he didn't do the education show and he didn't do the iPhone 4S show. So we've gotten a bit acclimatized to that. I know, but I still, every time I see a keynote, I want to see Steve. Yeah, and yeah. I think that Tim did a pretty good job. You know, if you if you compare that keynote to to any keynote in 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 technology, it's it was incredible. But when you compare it to a Steve note, you know, I mean, he 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 was the master, you know, and 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 these may be the Padawans, but he was <laughs> the master. So you know, and and you know, I, I actually haven't had a lot of people. You know, even like all four of my grandparents are, are alive. And so I haven't really had many people I know die. And so it, it is really odd to me uh, just thinking of, of of this this guy who's impacted my life in so many ways. And, and you know, it, it's one of those things working in uh, uh, as an iOS de- developer. It's like my entire livelihood is, is um, attributable to his work. And so <clears throat> I won't say I get like, you know, super choked up or anything. I mean, you know, it's not like he's my father or anything. But there's it's kind of a weird thing. I mean, you know, he was he was such a big part of this, um, you know, this whole new um, post PC world and and ushered it in. So, you know, the iPad two I think is probably one of the most um, highly anticipated and and breakthrough products we're going to see in a while. And and you know, to not have him there is uh, it, it's a little sad. Can I so? it's really interesting because Steve Jobs had this quality about him. I mean, like he was engaging, but at the same time, it looked like he could turn around and kill you with a look at any moment. There was a real like edge to him. And Tim Cook is rock solid. He look, He's very thoughtful. He's very knowledgeable. Phil uh, Schiller is affable, friendly, comes off very well. Uh, there was no Scott Forstall. We can talk about that in a little bit. Eddie Q speaks well, but he's got more of an urban kind of feel to him. It's just, you're, you're absolutely right. It was... It was really different, but it was like a, it was almost like a different Apple in this event. And I guess it's, it's good to start at the beginning. The part that shocked me, David, and maybe you could speak to this as a developer is there was no gold master for 5.1. It was, it was it, the last beta, I think was 57 days ago. And then they just released it today. Yeah. I, that, that was really strange. I, I, I don't understand why they did that, but from what, um, from what I can tell, uh, just in use, I don't think they changed that much from beta three. And so I think it was kind of like beta three was the gold master and they, they just kind of delayed it. So I don't, I don't know that this is a, any kind of huge departure that we should like, you know, read the tea leaves with, but it, it's definitely interesting. 
did you did it make you nervous like want to go check to make sure that it was sort of binary compatible with what you'd been testing against well I, you know i'm not in the middle of any big um uh, I'm, I'm kind of in the middle of some big revamps where we're not actively you know testing against the the the, the uh, upcoming versions and stuff and so i mean i'm always doing some level of testing but um but no i wasn't i wasn't freaked out i mean you know the beta beta 3 seemed to be really solid so um and, and you know apple actually does a really good job of of i, I think testing um existing apps against these new ones on their end even and i've been pretty amazed at how well compatibility stretches through releases and how few bugs do crop up unless you're just doing crazy stuff you're not you know you really shouldn't be doing well as a consumer though the thing that interested me georgia is you know usually the 5.1 comes with a new ipod touch and we can talk about that as well later uh, but the ipad has had new features there with 3.2 introduced the whole concept of the iPad UI and then 4.2 was the grand unification it brought all the the iPhone the iOS 4 stuff to iPad it, there's barely any new features for the iPad I can't call it iPad 3 for the new iPad it didn't get any really new OS features can we can we start with that though okay why do you think it was called the new iPad it's the <laughs> strangest name it's the strangest name so do I call it the iPad do I call it the new iPad, which is so lame, I'm not going to be able to do that. What's what's happening with the name? Is iPad 3, like, having a number at the end of it? I'm not saying they should go the way of, like, you know, Samsung or something. Like, I'm not saying they have to add a, a 5,000 digits to it, but, like, what? After 3 came nothing? The next one's going to be the newer iPad, and then it'll be the newest no, iPad, something David like had Die a, Hard. David had a good tweet about this. I'll hand, it, hand the mic to him. Yeah, I mean, I think... Um, <clears throat> It, it, I would have never expected it. And, you know, part of me is kind of like, what the hell? <laughs> you know, because we all <laughs> expect it and we're thinking, you know, iPad 3, iPad HD. And honestly, even though a lot of people were poo-pooing the uh, notion, I thought I iPad HD might have a nice ring to it. Because um, from a consumer perspective, you know, HD, high definition, I think I think it's it would have been a decent marketing um, name for the new iPad. Um but I think it's actually brilliant, this whole, the new iPad, because, I mean, it's like, it, it, it's like, uh, I remember I, I had a Chevy Tahoe for a while. I'm almost embarrassed to say that. But the, uh, it was like, I don't know, 90, it was like a 2001. Well, in 2003, they updated the, the roof racks, but the rest of the body wasn't that different. And so, but they did something to make you know that it had changed so that from like a, a marketing so that if you own the the old Tahoe, you know, you own the old Tahoe. right? <laughs> yeah. So so with the iPad, it, it's pretty obvious as soon as you turn the thing on, if it's the new iPad or if it's the old crappy iPad, <laughs> the subtly <laughs> crappy iPad. But in a way, and, and this is what Renee and I were talking about right before the show, is that it, it, it's not even really that awkward to talk about or blog about because all you do is you say the new iPad. It, it's a sentence. It becomes a, a phrase, the new iPad. That's and it, it, good and, until it becomes it, the old iPad and, and then we have newer. another iPad and then we'll be no, like, but, okay, but, well, when we do comparisons, we'll be like, well, this is better than the iPad 2 in comparison to the new old iPad <laughs> and then the no, iPad no, no, but, you know, whatever see, else the, the name will be, it's going to be a huge issue. I think it just seems like for marketing awkward. wise, kind of lame. No, 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 no. But see, that that's the brilliance of it is that it's not the new iPad, like capital N-E-W iPad. It's the new iPad, like yeah. lowercase so N-E-W. So, so, yeah. Right. So, when, so it's, it's the iPad, right? And so, right. so you, you go buy the iPad and you're hanging out, you're at a coffee shop and somebody's like, is that the new iPad? Like, yeah, it's the new iPad. And, you know, your your friend's like, what should I get, the new iPad or or, or the older one? And so when the new <laughs> new iPad comes out, it's just going to be the new iPad. And so when you get that, somebody's going to ask, is that the new iPad? And you're like, yeah, it's the new iPad. It's not the last iPad. And, I mean, Apple's been doing that with the iPod Touch for a while now. And it's just and all the, Macs. It's the iPod Touch. Well, yeah, I can't wait Macs. till they come out with the new iPhone. It'll be the new iPhone. Leanna said, no. Le, to, Leanna's in her chat room. She did predict this. I want to give her credit for predicting this naming scheme because she was fed up. Yes, she was fed up with the numbers. Wow. That, yeah. That's brilliant. Um, I'm, I'm impressed, Leanna. 
Yeah, she, she's good. A, yeah, she's a smart. Uh, she's sometimes too smart. It scares me. Um, <laughs> okay, let me let me throw out. Let with me ask you this though, Georgia. Do you that, think it'll be better? Because yeah. right now the iPad Two is the old iPad, and the iPad is the new iPad. Do you think once there's no more iPad Two, it'll be easier because it'll just be like like your MacBook Air is not the new MacBook Air. It's not MacBook Air Two. It's just MacBook Air. You know, by that time, people will be adjusted to it. <laughs> Sorry, can you repeat the question? Because like right now, sorry, right now there's an iPad. I was trying iPad, to follow iPads and I got lost. Somewhere. There's an iPad 2, which is the old For iPad, and an iPad, person. which is the new iPad. So it's a little bit awkward because the iPad 2 is the old one and the iPad is the new one. But, but the first a, iPad was just an iPad 2 yeah. as well. No, so, wait, iPad as well. But the iPad 2 is still also. being sold. So when the iPad 2 stops being sold, they'll just be the iPad. But some people will still have the iPad, which now there's two of them. Just one's old and one's new. But your Mac doesn't two. bother you. Like your MacBook Air, you don't really, do you care what <laughs> is generation? Is it old, is it the new, or is it the two? Do you care what generation no, 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 your no, no, MacBook no. Air is, though? Yeah, but, and, and that's that's the thing, is that, that um, is that there, there, there's not going to be that important of a distinction anymore. Like when, when, when we blog about it and talk about it, like this is such an inside baseball kind of thing because the average person, it, it's like, do you have the newest iPad or do you have an older iPad? And if you have the newest iPad, that's cool. And if you have an older iPad, that's not. I mean, that, <laughs> that's really kind of. <laughs> You're either cool I mean, or lame or Seth. No, but but really think about it. It's like really what's important to the consumer is that you either have the latest one or you have an older one. I mean, I mean I'm, mean, i you know, I'm not a super materialistic well, person. I buy, I buy all this stuff because it's, you know, for work. Yeah, uh, absolutely. <laughs> it's not because you're but, a huge geek. <laughs> No, of course not. No, and I mean I only own one computer, and and I actually have a very few gadgets, uh, uh, but but that's really what it boils down to to the average consumer. It's like, do you have the new one or do you not have the new one? And I think that's kind of the direction Apple is moving with it. It's just that simplicity. Do you have the new iPad or do you have an old iPad? And I think that's how it'll be framed, both in marketing and. In discussion, do you have the new iPad or do you have an old iPad? Now, Leanna is starting to storm out in the chat room already uh, over us uh, arguing about this. But Apple is just calling it iPad <laughs> bracket third generation bracket like they do with the iPods because there's, there's never no, no, been no. iPod Nano 5 or iPod Nano 7. Well, they're, they're calling that for – they're calling it that in like – For you internal know, documents. Support, yeah, and For absolutely. internal documents and things like that. They're never going to market it as iPad open bracket third generation closed bracket I no, mean, it's like an iMac know. is an iMac but if you go to Apple's tech support site it's iMac late 2001 spring or something or yeah, late spring and I, 2001 and that's, it really is great marketing it really is and and I think I think the conversation around it will will develop and it'll all it'll all feel very natural especially like Renee said once the iPad 2 um, shifts then then it's just going to be really natural the new iPad or an old iPad now the and the first the first thing that I went to look at when they showed it was to confirm, as we had suspected, that yes, it has a home button. Yes. <laughs> no, we knew that. I mean, the, the instant someone had, said there we was... We already said that it, it really has to have a home button. I think that... And as you can see from the pictures, it was just on its side. Yeah. It was, I mean, there, yeah, we, we... Another thing that was vastly debated. Yeah. No, I, I mean, I think we did, not to toot our own horn, but I think we did fairly well with our predictions this year. We had... We had fairly solid information on, and it wasn't surprising. It does. I don't know if that takes. Some people said that the blogs take away from the fun of the event, but I think it's like movies. If you read the spoilers, it's because you want to read the spoilers. If you don't want to be spoiled, you don't read the spoilers. You just go into the event clean. So I think that's well. That's, that's the most exciting part of all of it is dealing with what's going to happen, what's not going to happen, what can you guess. We only have uh, like in comparison to, um, you know, Android any Central other company. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Right. We only have two devices, maybe three devices. You know, if we're lucky for a year that we get to. Right, so to let's see do that quickly. Fail. No iPod Touch still. I mean, everything has been revved now except for the iPod Touch. Is that a and hint? Is that a sign? Do you think it's a sign that they're going to be uh, slowly weeding away the amount of iPod Touches out there? Either that, or could they be rating on a on a much better upgrade for the iPod Touch? That might. Or they just iPhone, like making money. <laughs> I mean, you know, the the current iPod Touch is is great. I mean, and if you think about the demographic who's buying it, you know, for them to be able to keep the price down, because <clears throat> you know, a lot of people don't think about, you know, when when you look at the um, spec um, comparability between the iPod Touch and the iPhone, the iPhone is actually like a seven hundred dollar device that's subsidized yeah. by the carriers, and so when yes. you look at that and you think about Apple having to build a 
what what is the iPod Touch start at two hundred dollars? Yeah, you know they they got to cut costs somewhere, and so you know maybe this was just the version where it's like you know what <laughs> we we just can't fit all this cool stuff that we put in the iPhone for us. And if you look back, like the the current iPod Touch screen is not as good as the the um, iPhone Retina display, yeah. even though it was uh, higher density. It's not an IPS um, panel. The camera's not as good. I mean, you know, they, they have to cut a lot of corners to to hit that price point. And so in, in a lot of ways, to me, it just makes sense from a component standpoint w- that they're not going to bring that into parity. Uh, and that's that's probably going to be something even moving forward to keep that $200 price point. They just can't shoot for almost any level of feature parity. I'm surprised that the old one uh, had the A4 chip and and a, and a higher resolution display, display, even if it wasn't a great display like the iPhone 4. So let's let's start breaking down the 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 new. I keep going to call it the iPad 3. I have to decondition myself. The new iPad. Um, let's go through the hit list very quickly. So it got the Retina display. No huge surprise there. Uh, people who've actually seen it say it looks as fantastic as I think most of us expected it to. Though so you have to hold it slightly further away than the iPhone. For it to be retina. Uh, I do that already. Well, but you, yeah, you do. That's that's natural. I, I, you I, might. I, I think that actually I hold my iPad at the same level that I hold my phone at. That's why you're going. No, actually, I'm the one going blind, not you. Oh, oh, uh, that was just me. Yeah, but, no. But the but the distance that you hold your iPad and iPhone, how, have you measured that? Because ten inches to your eyes, which is what the the benchmark they used for the iPhone, is actually surprisingly close. So if you're right. if you're holding both of them at the same distance, I bet it is closer to the sixteen inches they. Yeah. They they call it. Yeah, it might be about twelve, I think, for both. Really? Yeah, I hold the iPad a little bit further away, but I think that uh, Apple had this whole presentation. Well, I'm, I'm gaming usually on it, so I need both of my hands on it, and you know, with bent arms. I, that's about. I think I'll, I'll take a look. And anyway, they had an yeah, interesting yeah. show of technology where they explained they were pulling the pixels up so there'd be no um, no just well, interference because the, that many pixels that dense were subject to interference. It was actually fairly technical what they went into and they, they took their time during the event to explain the retiny is of the of the panel which was interesting because apple is usually not technical about these these components yeah and you know you you said um the retina display was pretty much a given leading up to the event and and i think that's true given the leaks and whatnot but i was still kind of wondering like you know are they gonna is this gonna be one of those keynotes where it's just like everybody's shocked because they didn't do it because the the tech, I mean, to to do this dense of a screen that big, it, yeah. it, I mean, they're really pushing the envelope. And and I tweeted earlier about how um, for them to keep the price at four ninety nine with yes. the Retina display, the new yeah. camera, the new chip, the, the A five X, all this stuff. You know, it they're they're really kicking ass in a in a way that's going to be hard for anybody to even even get close to. I mean, the competitors have had a hard time matching the iPad two at five hundred dollars. Yes, I still don't think we even have a competitor to the iPad two at five hundred dollars. And now they set the whole the, the benchmark so so much further. So you know, even though you you say the the iPad Retina display was was a given, I, I'm still blown away that they were able to do it, and then especially able to do it at that price. Yeah, the price, uh, I mean, we kind of heard that the price was going to be the same, but it's hard to believe that, and we'll get into the other pieces, but it's hard to believe that much technology uh, and uh, the radios too, At the the, the price for a, a cellular radio version is the same. Uh, let's quickly do the other stuff though, A4X chip. So we heard it was going to be quad core. Josh Sapolsky heard it was going to be dual core. The answer is it's a dual core chip with quad core graphics. <laughs> I'm giving us at least 25% on that one. Um <laughs> But that, so that it's not an A6 chip. We we heard the A6 chip was being tested, so maybe the A6 chip used too much battery. We don't know at this point. But they went with an A5X, and they stressed once again the graphical performance. Um, arguably, David, I don't think that consumers really care about the cores. It's the performance of the device, and the iPad on two cores and one core has always been has performed much better than more powerful chips on other devices. Oh yeah, and I, I don't. I mean. I'm surprised, like you said, at how technical they even got in all this. I mean, they didn't tell us the RAM, but we're assuming it's it's one gigabyte. Um, the A5X, they didn't say, you know, what uh, clock speed it was running at or anything like that. I mean, at the end of the day, <clears throat> because of um, because of the 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 20 year history of the foundation of of iOS, which a lot of people don't give enough credit to 
the 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 insane complexity of building a platform like this and how Apple was able to leverage decades of experience building the Mac OS platform. So a lot of their drivers and graphics optimizations and all these things, they've been polishing for years and years and years. And there's still code that's, you know, running your iPad today that was written by Next Software back in, you know, the early 90s. So it's, I mean, it's pretty incredible when you think about that, but but that's that's the lead Apple has. You don't you don't have to care that it's at one point you know, two gigahertz processor, dual core compared to a Android that's running a quad core 1.6 or whatever, you know, the iPad is going to beat it in, in, in real world performance. You know, you may find some quirky test that you can, you know, say that Android beats it with this very specific metric. But if you look at most apps and most use cases and everything, the iPad is just going to continue to kick everybody's ass. And you saw the gaming demo, right, Georgia? The Infinity It Blade. was insane. It was beautiful besides the kind of... Um, um, the the manner in which they they spoke about the game, which was it came off a little bit, let's say, um, over edited, <laughs> <laughs> over scripted, <laughs> under under spontaneous to be over edited. Uh, it was beautiful. It was fluid. It looked like a lot of fun. I'm not sure about gaming with with you know using my fingers to touch a screen. It's going to be a very interesting experience. I don't like the manner of not having joysticks. So this might be the great change in between both of them. And I really enjoyed taking a look at how he, um, yeah, worked through dealing with that. Yeah, I think the games that are ported over never do as well as the games that are designed specifically for an iPad. Because like the games that were designed for controllers, they adapt them where they make virtual controllers. But the games that are really designed for iPad work so much better and, and seem to be more successful too. So hopefully we'll see more of those. And how amazing is it that it kept the 10 hours battery life? That was impressed. So I thought, I, I guessed wrong. I thought that Apple was going to say it's got 10 hours of battery life on Wi-Fi, nine hours on 3G. And if you decide to use LTE, it'll have, you know, some small number. Four. But, you know, very carefully, <laughs> very carefully staged. Nine hours on, and yes, it has, we spoiled it right there. It has LTE, not only, so the problem with LTE, just to back up for a second, is there's 38 different band segments internationally. So it's almost impossible to have one ch current generation chipset support LTE in North America, Europe, the Pacific, and Australia. Sorry, Asia and Australia. You, you, you take two models at least. Apple did two models, but they did one for Verizon and one for the rest of North America, and there's no international LTE. But they can still get nine hours of battery life on LTE when I remember Phil Nickinson's Thunderbolt would sit on a desk and drain in front of you like you're being murdered on <laughs> Mortal Kombat. You know, you were just watching the life force end out of that phone. That's fairly impressive. And going to LTE, I think, is a good move for Apple at this point, especially with the bigger device that with the bigger battery in it. Yeah, it's 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 incredible that that I mean it, again, everything about this new iPad is a pretty huge leap that they were able to to do the retina display, the four four G LTE and everything else. And 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 once again, I'm surprised they did the 4G. That was another one of the things I was like, you know, okay, maybe they'll do the Retina display, but will they really actually do 4G? I don't know. And and you know, this again, what I just said about about you know the the history and the legacy. You know, I bet they have been working hard and deep on the networking stack to 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 make it this power efficient on on what is historically an incredibly power hungry chip and, and that's apple you know they're, they're gonna do the work to make it make it a great experience for the user and 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 that's what's really really hard people underestimate how hard it is for these other platforms to compete because because of where they're at in the the life cycle of of the platform and that and the, the ios platform and and what it was built on with mac <clears throat> OS 10 um, is just so far ahead. And so they're able to, you know, throw some engineers at this networking and, and, and you know, I don't know any, you know, how many inside information, but I mean, I think it's pretty obvious that they're doing some pretty incredible things in software to help. Well, you saw chip. that antenna test chamber they revealed last time, right? It looked like something out of Battlestar Galactica. Oh yeah, I mean yeah, that's the thing, and I, I sound like such a fanboy, but I mean I, I was just really blown away today. So I'm just yeah, I'm I'm gushing a little bit at, at just how well able Apple is able to continually just execute, execute, execute. What I want to test is um, Android, especially the early ones, did not have an easy time switching from LTE back down to 3G. If especially the Verizon ones, if you lost the LTE area. 
Um, Windows Phone actually was, were telling us that they're doing a much better job of that because they think that people are going to not enjoy that experience on Android and go to Windows Phone. And I want to see how much attention Apple paid. Because, George, if you're out there with your, four, you know, with your LTE and you suddenly leave a coverage area and your, your phone is almost useless, can't reconnect to the network, you won't be – not your phone, your tablet. You won't be happy. So I think that's something Apple probably paid attention to. Right. So let's take a peek at the specs, Renee. Is the iPad, the new iPad, any thicker and or heavier? It is a than little bit. The iPad 2. Yeah, I think it's zero, was it 0. 0.6 millimeters thicker. Um, the thing that's interesting, though, is I thought they'd go a little bit thicker than that. They managed to put a five megapixel camera in it. And it's not just, it's not the iPhone 4 camera. It's got the five pieces of glass like the iPhone 4S right. camera. It's just not as it's many megapixels. Cam- and they called it yeah. iSight. And it's got all the same IR filters. And uh, it, it's a good camera. I mean, Apple didn't, the previous camera was what, 0.6 megapixels? It wasn't even one megapixel. This is like a huge, in terms of upgrades, this is a huge upgrade for the iPad. What, what's with this I, eyesight branding? Have, have they have they used that? I've never seen that. No, they. It, Phil Schiller mentioned it today. He's like, when you have a camera this good, we like to call it an eyesight. Yeah. So so I'm on the specs for the iPhone 4s now, and on the 4s it says eyesight camera. But I mean, was did they just update that marketing copy today? I have not seen it previously, so I suspect they decided that the front camera is going to be called FaceTime. But the front camera did not get an update, by the way. No <clears> FaceTime <throat> HD for us. It's still VGA. Right. Um, but the back camera, I, I I can't really complain. Georgia, the iPad tourist is going to have a real shooter now. Because you guys have seen that, right? It's like old school cameras. They're out there holding their iPads up. You almost want to throw the sheet over the back of their head while they sit there going click, 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 click. Um, and that would be a great accessory. I, I'm sure some, I'm sure like ThinkGeek will come out with it, the retro iPad you know, camera cover with the but- telephoto. But see, they're not even branding. They're not even branding the front-facing camera as a FaceTime camera. So I don't know if maybe they're waiting for the you know FaceTime HD or you know maybe they'll brand that when when that's actually worth talking about. But a VGA camera, it's apparently not worth the branding. <laughs> no, they don't want to put the FaceTime name on that baby. <laughs> that's... Oh no 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 wait. So the iPad does say the does iPad. It? I'm I'm trying to yeah, I'm, I'm live figuring all this out. You're live specking. <laughs> Live specking that the, the new iPad says FaceTime camera with VGA quality photos. The iPad 4S still just says front camera with VGA quality photos and video. Oh uh, yeah, so that's so no, they are branding. That's that's interesting. Everything's branded: Retina display, eyesight camera, FaceTime camera. It, it makes it seem specialized. You don't take a look at the spite where you're like, oh well, you know the specs are the same, but this is an eyesight. Also, the entire iPad site is animated now. There's no, there's no static. Well, there's that not a lot of static pictures. That is absolutely beautiful. Of course, you know, depending on what you're browsing on and <laughs> what else is running, <laughs> it's really nicely done. It's not something that's overly uh, done. It just shows. Like I love when it was showing the, um, uh, the, the, um, the case. Sorry. Yes. I can't even think about it. What's, what's crazy, this is my, like we were talking before about the post Steve Jobs era, and it, it feels to me sort of like Gordon Ramsay was your chef for a long time, and you were either a donkey or a genius, and now he's not there anymore, and you finally have access to the spice rack all to yourself, and you can like, we don't have to use cayenne pepper every time, you know, maybe I can use oregano this time, and it seems like <laughs> a little bit of personality is just dropping in from each of the different executives. That's, that's an interesting take. Yeah, I, I don't know if it's accurate, but it just seems like each of their personalities are coming out a little bit more. Um, I, I will say, so, <clears throat> sorry, <clears throat> allergies down here in the central Texas. Anybody coming for South by Southwest, you're probably going to get hit by all sorts of molds and pollens Ouch. and stuff. Anyways, um, so t- today the, today I was watching the um, the uh, live stream, uh, the, the small segment I got to watch and noticed that there's a new wallpaper on the iPad. Yeah. And and I, I mean this theory is probably wrong, but I always thought that that whole little like water drop thing that was on the iPad four default wallpaper and the and the iPad default wallpaper, thought that's got to be like a Steveism. Like he just fell in love with that, and it was like no, no, you know, like every executive was like, 
that, that just doesn't, you know, show off the screen. It kind of distracts from the icons. He's like, no, that is our wallpaper. That yeah. is the wallpaper. <laughs> and so, right. you know, that, that may be one of those subtle things. Like I think the new wallpaper is actually really nice. And I mean, I have no idea if that was really a Steve thing, but you know, it, it, it very well could be. Well, we got and glass it, bookshelves for the photo app. So yeah, there's some skeuomorphism lives. <laughs> yeah the new iPhoto app is is very schemorphic how about those brushes yeah oh, okay, I mean, so let's get to that it's like, let's just finish up this part now because it was were you were you shocked that there was no scott forstall on stage david dave and he wasn't showing off any ios stuff you know I, there was so much stuff going on i didn't even think about that today um but you got to think that ios 6 is kind of the big deal so i don't i don't think we should read too much into that um you know, there there was, <clears throat> I mean, as far as like, because um, he, he, he forced all never really done the, the like iWork demos or the, no. you know, things like that. And so, you know, he is the iOS uh, um, demo guy. And so I think they're kind of saving him. They could have given him hey. Japanese Siri, thrown him a bone. Oh, but yeah, for, yeah, throw him on stage for two minutes. That's worse than not putting him on stage at all. <laughs> that, that, that's just embarrassing. <laughs> We're only going to bring you on for Siri. No, I mean, you know, and, and, and that's, a, that's a very interesting thing to talk about now. And, and it's all just pure speculation. But, it, you know, the fact that, you know, with Steve gone, he was in some ways the glue that, that you know, he, the buck stopped there. And yeah. so now the buck stops at Tim Cook, but he's not quite as going to be quite as hands on, I think, in every single facet of it. He's every not a product thing. guy. Yeah. He's an I operations mean, guy. Yeah. And like, like the, the, I don't know, the, the, the pictures that leak, not leak, but somebody posted on Facebook a while back of Steve Jobs sitting there playing with the new uh, photo booth. And I think it was, um, yeah. Uh, Ma Matas, Ma Mike yeah, Matas, Mike Mattis, um, yeah. Mattis, whatever. Mattis. I don't know how to pronounce it either. Don't take my cue. Yeah, and so you know, those are the kind of things that Steve did. You know, he would sit there and play with Photo Booth, and then and then if you remember the 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 Steve note where he demoed it, he was like really excited. Like that was really fun. Remember to him. him browsing on the original iPad, just sitting in that chair. Like Tim wasn't didn't sit in a chair and you know, play no, with the and, iPad. And there was no actual iPad. Everything was automated beforehand. That's on the true. Screen, I didn't realize which that. Which I thought, oh, that's not as much fun. Yeah, we should have seen Tim <laughs> in the designer when chair. when they played the Infinity Blade game. Yeah. Well, yeah, because Steve yeah. really did enjoy it. Like, uh, in the original yeah. iPad announcement, he was, he was like, you had to run out and take it away from him. He was having so much fun. Yeah. We're just going to pause for a second so we can thank our sponsor for today's show. It's Audible. They make audiobooks. They are excellent. I commuted for a long time, more than an hour each way every day, and I lived and existed and stayed sane primarily through Audible. Most recently, I listened to the Steve Jobs biography and Inside Apple uh, through Audible. Even though I don't commute as much anymore, I still find uh, it's very tiring to read. I spend all day in front of a computer writing, reading, coding. Um, and my eyes get tired, and it's much more relaxing, it's much more enjoyable, it's much more educational to just listen. They have fantastic readers, from the original authors to talented voice actors. Um, they are excellent at staging the productions. That's really what they are. They're like productions. It's like listening to a well-done play or a movie. Uh, Audible has literally uh, kept me going for two or three years now. And I heart them greatly for a free download, a free Audible book, whether it is the Steve Jobs biography, Inside Apple, um, a fantasy, a fiction. If you want to catch up on uh, Game of Thrones or any other favorite series that you've heard about, just head on over to audiblepodcast.com slash imore, I-M-O-R. I-M-O-R-E. Audible.com slash imore. Get a free download. What a great way to start. Who can resist a free book? Uh, go get it now. Well, let's talk um, about the other thing that was largely debated. And I can think back, Renee, to the article that you wrote of uh, Siri and yes. why the difficulties they would have in bringing Siri to the iPad. So is that about what you had expected, Renee? Actually, Can Alex Heath from Cult of Mac, after I wrote that article, he, he wrote a, he wrote a follow-up piece uh, saying that his he thought that they might just do dictation. And it turns out that's exactly what they did i was kind of I, I didn't know i kept trying to picture in my head what siri would look like on the ipad 
Uh, and Notification Center, they changed a lot. And there was this famous thing where Steve, apparently, you know, anecdotally, Steve Jobs, there's no clock app, no weather app, and no stocks app because Steve thought it would look stupid on a big iPad screen. And Siri's heavily tied into those, among other things. So I had a really difficult time imagining what it would look like. And it looked like maybe Apple did too. And they just gave us... I'm happy with dictation. I often go to hit dictation on my iPad and it's not there and I get upset and I'm too lazy to type. So I'm happy that it's there. Um, but it's it's interesting that it's not a full-on Siri because they make such a big deal out of that for their iPhone 4S. Right. You know, I, I'll, I'll jump I'll jump in and, and gain myself a little credibility here. Um, I am really shocked at how much they advertise Siri because in my experience, every time I try and use Siri, it, it's pretty frustrating. And like you can't even depend on it because <clears throat> the other day I was driving, I was like, oh, I use Siri to text my wife. Sorry, I can't accept requests right now. And it's like, yes, I got the same thing. It was probably the same day. It works for Santa. I mean, come on. Thanks. Yeah, but yeah, it's like they're they're advertising this so heavily, and yet it is a very, very, very beta product. I mean, it's not even like beta. It is like very beta. I mean, when when half the time you try and use it, it's not even available. That's pretty beta. When you actually get to use it, and then it's pretty rough. I mean, it's like it's It's like borderline alpha. Yeah, it's, it's like it's like off. like maybe Having twenty five percent good. It, and it does not produce for you. I'm like, I'll just type it out. And the worst part is dictation has no error. Like Siri will actually tell you it can't detect, uh, connect, but dictation will just spin around and then not do anything. And people don't understand why it's not working. It's not a good user experience. That Plus, happened to me the other really, day. I was like, what the hell? Yeah. It doesn't when like they me. did the display, when they when they showed off dictation for us on the iPad. I thought it was so cheap, if I may say it, (laughs) that Schiller just had an automated voice already set up to do it so that, and you know, it's because like live, they were worried that it was going to completely screw up and that's what everyone would be talking about. But it was so obvious that they were worried about it made me feel like they don't believe in their own product. And if they don't believe in it, don't show it to me. Well, they could have had the MiFi's interrupting it. Yeah, I think that goes back to, um, and you know, a lot of people have been talking about the differences, and we were just a minute ago. I mean, you got to think, you know, th- this is, I mean, we had we've had a couple of of demos, you know, post Steve, but this was kind of the first big unveil. You know, yeah. the the 4S was a big jump, and Siri was really cool. Um, you know, and the guys pulled that off, um, yeah. but this was like the first big unveil, and and I I think that you know they had to have been. And, and it's even kind of the first big unveil that that Steve wasn't there. I mean, I'm sure, you know, up until the the 4S um, announcement, Steve was working with them concertedly to to get that put together. And so this is kind of the first real post Steve keynote. And and you know, the iBook thing that doesn't count. I mean, that was a you know a small thing, but this is the first like real post Steve keynote. And and you got to think. I mean, again, just you know having. Uh, the guy who set the bar for tech demos and and this is the first time you're 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 rolling without him and, and not even having him there in prep um i i, I mean I, i'm gonna give him a little leeway in that <laughs> i mean i and honestly i mean as mu- I, I, I mean as much as i just ragged on syria <laughs> i wouldn't trust it live either. <laughs> so you gotta you gotta think yeah but, but again but, if they're not gonna trust it just don't show it off or practice if your dictation is, you know, 98, 99%, we're all going to be fine with that. You know, we'll blog about Make it, it into but we'll a still joke. be fine about that. But if they haven't practiced it and they don't believe in it enough to use it live, I'm not feeling very um, thrilled with, with having it on. Like even just having it, it's like dictation. I'm like, and <laughs> am I supposed to really be excited with having it? Eh, it's okay. I'd I'm rather have a clock. It. What I found was odd I'd though. I'd be excited if there was a clock. What I found was odd is that the Apple TV got the keynote equivalent of a press release. I mean, it didn't even get featured as a product. It was shown off almost as an accessory to iTunes getting 1080p. It, it was, is. It, it, yeah, it wasn't I mean, like... That's what it is. The first two got big parts of the keynote. The original iPad shared the iPhone introduction. And, sorry, the original Apple TV shared the iPhone introduction. Apple TV 2 was part of the iPod Touch event in 2010. This one was like, uh, iTunes is 1080p, and we've made the Apple TV 1080p too, just so you can watch stuff. Well, Tim <laughs> did say he had it in his house, and it was, it was, uh, it was very good. But it, it really was a footnote to this event. It's exactly the same. Uh, if you have a current iP- uh, Apple TV and you do the software update, it'll be identical except for the 1080p on, as the new Apple TV. 
Yeah, and, and and that's the thing. I mean, they they had so much to talk about with the iPad. It makes sense that they didn't give it premier billing. And and I mean, I, I don't know what's with all this Apple talking. Uh, they they always Steve always ended you know keynotes saying you know we have some some great stuff to show you, or they would end the analyst calls saying you know this is going to be an incredible year. And I always felt like that that set up this like level of hype that. That would just be, you know, tough to to achieve, and 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 I have always been a little disappointed. It's like, you know, really, was that worth saying in an analyst call? Like, we had, you know, this is going to be an incredible year. This is the year, and so I, I kind of got used to it just being like this, this like marketing term, like, oh, yeah. this is the year, and this is, you know, when everything. But <clears throat> they're kind of, I, I, and so I don't know if they're just, you know, channeling Steve, and this is, you know, their way of kind of building that hype. But there, there seems to be. Things are kind of building towards, you know, what what could be some really big stuff. So, I mean, iOS as a platform, you know, we're hitting four, well, five years now since the original iPhone and four years since the App Store. And again, you know, 20 years of platform history or, or more than 20 years of, of platform history. And, you know, th- this could be a really interesting year. And so, the, you know, the Apple... The the new Apple, um, what did they even call it? The Apple TV Five. They didn't call it anything. It was again. It was just like just it was just Apple, Apple TV. TV. It was just like it's just fine. Georgia, were you? So, were you, so the new Apple TV in in history probably will just be a footnote of this year. So, I mean, especially compared to the the Retina display on the iPad and everything else I've been doing. It's not even any display on the iPad. But he did not. They did not say this is the year of the new iPad. Last year it was the year of the iPad too. This year there was no such rhetoric. But it was the year of the iPad last year. It was. And now, now it's just obvious. Now it's, <laughs> it's always going to be, now it's just the decade of the iPad, I suppose. Leanne has also said that it's going to be just the iPhone this year. There won't be an iPhone 5 or an iPhone 4GS or an iPhone 6. It'll just be an iPhone. And I think that's going to be fairly obvious. Yeah, and, Renee, I, and I bet they can pull that off this time because it's going to be a, it, it's the year for, for a case revamp. And so yeah. you can get away with that even better than they are going to be with on the iPad if it's like, hands down obvious you know if the screen's a little bigger if it's thinner if it's you know if if the hardware is completely different it's so much easier to get away with this whole the new iphone thing so i i buy that totally especially given today's announcement georgia sorry you were gonna say were you shocked that they went at the other tablets they went at them really hard last year last year they almost humiliated them like they said you know our competitors can't match our price there's only a hundred apps available for honeycomb uh, this year they they went after laptops a little bit, and then they kind of mocked Android a little bit. Um, they went after the Kindle a little. Yeah, um, but it, it it seems like like almost like what David said is that they're so far ahead in tablets. And granted, you know we don't know what Kindle sales are, but I, I, it's almost like a different product category. Um, that and they, I thought that they they could have just said, you know, like this is the only tablet really out on the market, and it would pre- most people would be like, yeah pretty much true right now well they showed the so, the so user the interface Notes kind of looks like a tablet they showed the, the they have a note 10.1 and we'll get to that in a second because samsung pr wasted no time blasting that out but um they they showed which what happens with a lot of the smaller android tablets is it just it's stretched uh phone software and that was right. one of the things that steve jobs said that the 9.7 inches let them have differentiated a, a software experience you could make a different class of applications and I think they definitely proved that was true. I mean, I don't know if you, if you saw that part, Dave. They showed Yelp on uh, an Android tablet. I did see that. That was pretty embarrassing. <laughs> and then they showed but, it on but, the iPad. But they were even generous because they actually were showing it on Ice Cream Sandwich, which, which I mean, how many how many tablets are shipping with Ice Cream Sandwich? And 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 how many are even going to get it? So that they even did a pretty generous comparison, and it was pretty embarrassing. Uh, John Fingus from Electronistas in the chat room. He's saying that at Mobile World Congress, uh, it, it felt like Samsung had had given up. And Android, Andy Rubin from Android, did say that they are going to take tablets super seriously. That they want to win at tablets. Um, but again, like Asus um, has has a tablet Had-fun. coming out. Yeah, and, and it, but they don't ship. The thing that really impressed me, the thing that shocked me. Was, and it, this was actually really painful for bloggers because you're used to more lead time. But they came out iPhone 5.1, sorry, iOS 5.1 today. The new iPad mm-hmm. available for order today arrives in stores next Friday. That's nine days. That is ridiculously fast compared to other platforms where um, ice cream sandwich phones and, and tablets that were announced months ago are still probably months from market. Um, 
it, it is just such a fast pace. Like we have all these buyers guides prepped, and we started putting them up today. Uh, which which one should you buy? But it's too late. People are already buying them. They're available yeah. for order immediately. Well, and, and, and what's really silly about all these other and and the tech industry has been bad and just gotten worse. And I'm surprised they haven't taken a better lead from Apple. But when you when you you know Microsoft with the folios and all these crazy stuff and. It, it, all these CES demos of all this tech that's just never going to hit the market. But then when they even like announce a product that's going to ship, they say, uh, I don't know, Q2 2012. Half, like, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, second half of 2012. It's like, seriously, like, are you, are, are, you, are you that far behind the iPad that you're like just pulling stuff <laughs> together to get this thing out that you're like, uh, Apple, uh, Apple took all the glass. There's no glass. <laughs> What, what shocked me, Georgia, is that for the because I thought that this would be hard because it was hard. The iPad and the iPad Two were both constrained by display quantities. They simply couldn't make enough displays fast enough to satisfy demand. Not only is the iPad, the new iPad, shipping in nine days, but for the first time, it's not U.S. only. It's coming out in a bunch of countries, including Canada. We can actually buy it the same date as the Americans this year, which that we always shocking. get shafted in that state. So I'm really happy that. We're going to be able to buy it at the same time. I think people are excited. Do you think that they're going to go through massive shortages because of that? I, I, they, they can't. I mean, like they, I don't think that Apple would allow that to, uh, that to happen. I think that's why they made it U.S. only last time. But this time it's Australia, Canada, France, Germany, Hong Kong, Japan, Puerto Rico, Singapore, Switzerland, the U.K., and the U.S. Virgin Islands with retina panels that are not easy to make. Uh, you yes. know, I, here's, here's my theory. So, so the the original iPhone comes out, and, and Apple's saying like, okay, let's let's get you know two million um, uh, units in the channel, and they blow through those, runaway hit. It's crazy. Like, okay, iPhone 3G, we're gonna get <clears throat> ten million in the channel. Yeah. Like that, that's crazy. That's crazy. We're not gonna sell ten million, but we're we're gonna take a big risk. We've got the money. We're we're gonna take a risk. We're gonna put, you know, and and I'm just BSing on numbers here. I have no idea exactly, you know, <laughs> what the numbers would be, but <clears throat> you know, they're like. We're going to take this huge risk. We're going to put get ten million in the channel and, and get them prepped. Then, the, then the iPhone, then it just blows it all out. Then the iPhone three GS comes. They're like, okay, this is crazy, guys. You know, they're sitting in a boardroom. This is crazy, but 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 we're going to get twenty million. You know, we're ramping up to twenty million for that for that first quarter, and and, and then it just blows it away. And I, and I think Apple is finally like, okay, guys, just pull out all the stops. You know. We're going to sell 100 million of these. Do what it takes to get these into the channel. You know, build new plants. You know, do what it takes. And I, I think that's where Apple's at now. It's like they're just going to sell a crap ton, and they know it. And so they're they're. I think they're finally just kind of catching up to being at the place where they can do it. <clears throat> and if you think about it too, with lead times and stuff, um, you know, they're building a factory. You know, even in China with all the you know deregulation and stuff, it still takes. You know, I, I don't know. I'm BSing here too, but it, I mean, I would think at least a year, probably longer. And by the time you tool up and get everything ready, so so they've been building to this, and so you know that's probably been part of the supply chain problem in the past. Is that by the time they're figuring out, you know, how much of a runaway success the next version is, they're already kind of locked into to what they're building for the next release. And so I, I, like I said, I think they're finally just hitting this place where it's like, we know we're going to sell a crap ton. We're going to build factories. And, 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 and they've been doing that for the last two years to finally build to this place. And so, you know, hopefully they're going to be able to finally meet demand. And it's pretty crazy to have a, have a, such a high price, high margin um, electronic device that they just can't build enough of. They have never fully met demand in any quarter with the iPad, which is, is, it's pretty incredible. I don't know if you saw it, Georgia, but they put up a graphic showing the iPad outselling the computers from all their competitors. Yes. That's pretty impressive. You, Dave Callow What's from it? Tua in the chat room is saying that that's Tim Cook's superpower, Georgia, that his ability to put all this stuff logistically together is what makes him who he is. Yeah, but he's, I mean, he's been with the company for, for you know, what, a decade, 12 years now? So it, 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 it's, it, it's him, of course. You know, he is obviously doing an incredible job with all that, but it's it, it's just taking time to get where they can put it all together finally. So when the second iPad, the iPad 2 came out, yes, they decided to not make any more iPads. Yes. And so we discussed what is going to happen when they come out with the, I, the new iPad. 
What's going to happen to the iPad 2s? Are they going to keep selling them and you'll be able to order them but at a lower price and cut off a little bit at the knees anyone else that's trying to um, cut at Apple with the tablet market or are they going to just ixnay them and make sure that they put all production into building the iPad 3, uh, sorry, the new iPad. <laughs> so what happened? And, well, you can get an iPad 2. For how much? Hundred dollars less, which is amazing. Three ninety nine. Absolutely awesome. Three ninety nine for black or white. I feel white. like it's a video, like like a, a, a what are those those game shows? How low can it go? Three ninety nine. But wait, there's more. The three G version is only five twenty nine. I'm actually surprised they, if if they can do the 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 new iPad for four ninety nine. I'm I'm surprised they didn't just drop the iPad two all the way to two ninety nine. But but Apple's funny. I mean, <clears throat> it's not you know, it's not subsidized, so you have to take a look into that when you're dealing with how much they want to keep their thirty percent profit margin. And if they right, drop the price a... too much, they're not going to be making the same amount of profits, and it's going to cut into their bottom line. Plus, some people might choose at that price to buy the iPad two instead of the new iPad, and Apple does not want that. Yeah, and 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 um, you know what's interesting too is how. You know, all, all, all of these other component um, or component uh, commoditized PC makers over the last decade have had to continually undercut each other and drive their gross margins lower yeah. and lower and lower and lower. And it's, it's, it's really interesting that Apple chooses not to play that game and, and doesn't play that game. And it's going to be interesting to see the teardowns of, of the new iPad and whether, you know, their, their investments in these factories and, 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 um, uh, economies of scale and everything else, you know, are they actually going to hit their gross margins this, this quarter? And for, for every quarter, since I can remember, Apple has been saying, you know, there's a product transition. We're going to miss our, our, um, uh, gross margin, you know, by this much or whatever. And it seems like, and, and I'm, you know, I'm not Horace to do or anything, but if they've missed it's it's by, by smidgens, it's by like, you yeah. know, single digits and, and, Pocket and points. Change. Yeah, by pocket change. And so this may actually finally be the quarter where, you know, we see a two or three percent drop in, in gross margins, which would be interesting. So so we'll see what happens. And and maybe that's why they kept the iPad two at three ninety nine. They said it's gonna help offset help offset that. So maybe that they're actually gonna make more on the iPad two than they do on the new iPad, at least for now, until you know <clears throat> Um, components um, ramp up and everything else like that. So you know maybe that that three ninety nine price point they could have dropped it lower, but they chose not to. So it'll be interesting um, the next quarterly call, which is May or something. Yeah, and it was like Georgia. The playbook is at two ninety nine. The Amazon Kindle Fire is around two ninety nine. I think still is it one ninety nine or something? Well, depending, it's the lighter, though. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, that's three ninety nine um, for schools. Bulk buying for schools. Bulk buying for business who don't necessarily need the latest, or maybe not even want the latest technology. That's that's a a, a much better deal than they had yesterday. Exactly. Exactly. Everyone that that's selling their iPad one day late are very <laughs> sad right now. <laughs> I can get a new one for four ninety nine. The only thing I was actually shocked about, and again probably because I do this, I had assumed that they would be more, was the amount of retail stores that Apple has right now. It was in the 300s. And for some reason, I thought it would definitely be like, I don't know, 600, 800 like Starbucks? stores <laughs> everywhere. But they are stunning. The, the store that we saw that was in Manhattan. Yeah, the Grand Central store. I was actually saying, well, where's the store? Like, where's the actual, I was waiting for some sort of glass box somewhere. It's actually just part of Grand Central Station. Stunning. The design look, it's just there. And the the way that they, you know, build up, like people are going in like they're superstars. Apple does a great job of making everyone feel special. So you see these people walking up the stairs and they're like, yes, yes, I, I you know, I got the touchdown and they're like showing their products. <laughs> Wow, what kind of marketing but is Apple that? Apple said that. I mean, Steve Jobs said that at the iPad 2 event that they considered the Apple Store as part of the strategy of of going to market with their devices, a way to teach people and let them touch and hold them. And I think that was also really clear with the videos, especially the iPhoto video. And a lot of people predicted iPhoto was the last major iLife app that hadn't been released. Um, I think actually to answer the old question, what what was on in the invitation? I think to see was the hardware and to touch was the software. And I, I don't know if you, you got to see the iPhoto demo in the presentation, Georgia, but that was, it was Randy, I'm going to mispronounce his name, Ubalos, the guy who came from Macromedia, designed all the Final Cut stuff, rewrote iMovie during a 
a snorkeling trip, so the legend says. Um, and it was a really, it was a really good demo. I mean, Adobe put out Photoshop Touch, which has frustrated the hell out of me for the last week and a half. And I think Apple kind of once again, like they did with GarageBand and with iMovie, said, uh, "This is how you make mobile software." It was nice. You I'd know, say I, I, it's okay the demo, but I wasn't blown away. And in, in, in use, I have so not cute. been that impressed, honestly. And there, some people have made some noise about, you know, they don't think this is Apple. And, and you know, Apple has been hiring out some stuff. And and I've heard whispers and, and you know, don't know any specifics or know, um, you know, anybody specific. But it's possible that this was hired out. So hopefully I'm not offending any friends or anything. But, <laughs> I mean... <clears throat> I tweeted a, just a couple of hours ago, you know, after playing with, with iPhoto and iOS, I, I, I'm i kind of just looking forward to hopefully the, the tap, tap, tap guys are doing camera plus for iPad. Cause yeah. I mean, honestly, I, I, I feel like it's a better product and, um, like there's a few things that the, the camera plus guys just did really, really smart. Like they don't actually, um, load a full resolution image and try and process that live they actually uh, quickly grab a little snapshot of it at a smaller resolution, and then they're able to show you the filters and stuff lightning quick on the iPad too. And you know, maybe they were just developing this for the new iPad, but on the iPad too, it's it's it it kind of bogs down, and 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 you know, the the transitions aren't really smooth when you're when you're trying to you know change a pass or not pass a bit, uh, um, you know change the level on these filters and stuff like that so i i'm a little surprised it, it, to me iphoto wasn't this blow away product that that it could have been and especially compared to some of the really incredible third party stuff going on in the in the photo market um um photoshop touch aside though that's total crap <laughs> I, I, so, I definitely think that's so worse David, than David did iPhoto. you like the image stabilizers when they showed the movie they showed like really stabilizing a picture if you're using your iPad for taking video. Um, <laughs> yeah, and they they have that on. Problem. <laughs> what do you say? I missed that. What was that? If, if you're if you're taking video with your iPad in the first place, there's an issue. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, I will say though that the video image stabilization stuff is pretty incredible. I take a lot of videos of my kids with my iPhone 4s. It is really impressive. So aside from, yeah, the problem of taking video with your iPad, it, it, it is actually really cool tech. <laughs> uh, so I, I'm being uh, ribbed in the chat room because I have not yet mentioned my one largest gripe with unfortunately oh, all Apple go. products, and that is the speaker system. And no, we did not get a better speaker system. David's a sound all. engineer. I'll let him take, tackle that. Okay, David, go ahead. What's up with that? <laughs> well, um, <laughs> it's that expensive and take up that much space that it was just impossible to do. Sound sound reproduction is at, at that size because what, what you're what you're talking about is that you're just not getting bass frequencies, and in order to get better bass response out of such a small speaker, you have to have um, a chamber. Um, to get those waves resonating in order to, to generate a better low frequency response. And, and given the size of the iPad and, um, and all the other constraints and, and given that they're, they're optimizing around um, battery life and, and cramming every last, you know, ounce of battery in there. Um, I think it's going to be a while before we, we, we hear any like dramatic breakthroughs in the, in the iPad speaker. And, and, you know, it, it's one of those things. I mean, are you, are you really carrying around this mobile device expecting to watch HD videos and, and have this incredible sound experience? Um, I, I would take good sound experience. That would be acceptable to me. I'll take a good sound experience. I don't want to have to do the granny thing constantly <laughs> on my iPad. Well, they, <laughs> Well, it, it is really frustrating that it's kind of a form over function thing. The fact that that they um, angled the case in such a way that it actually projects sound away from the listener instead of to the listener. <laughs> I mean, that that's a pretty fundamental that's, thing. But you know, that you know, would that, have been good enough for me if they decided <laughs> to do that. I'll take, I would accept that, David. Yeah, yeah, and and you know, I mean, you, in in any kind of device like this, there's just going to be trade offs, and and. Um, I, th I don't know if it was you, George, or somebody else um, that tweeted, and Renee and I kind of went back and forth on it about surround sound and all this kind of stuff. 
that 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 stuff that you you see on other tablets and stuff that that is is really gimmicky. I mean, you can't get surround sound out of a tablet, even with yeah. multiple I, speakers. I don't expect surround sound, even if like you know maybe the speakers could be like moved out and deal with that. But I, you know, just just to be able to actually hear what I'm listening to without headphones, noise, right, would have been good. yeah, or like without I'm having to cup, cup the tablet, iPad like, right yeah. next to my ear. <laughs> Yeah, and 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 the bottom line is, um, ask Johnny Ive. <laughs> <'Cause> they've <laughs> I mean, they've just taken a very they've taken that. a very form over function approach to it. They've they've said, mm -hmm. you know, it's more important to us to have battery life. It's more important for us to have have the feel in the hand uh, that we have to have the bezel be so clean. And you know, there's so many design considerations that that compromise the, the full audio screen of the iPad. That yeah, it. It maybe in the next revision of the of the form factor they could do something to improve it, but in the current form factor, there's just there's not much they could do, honestly. So I and, and it's unfortunate. I mean, I'll admit it sucks, but I mean, honestly, for me, I I don't mind the trade offs because I'm not sitting there watching movies on my iPad. I'm not. I don't even game that much. I mean, most of the time I'm reading, so I'm kind of the edge case there. But but I mean, you know, when I do, like I was watching the 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 keynote today. On my iPad, and I was doing the the hand cup thing. It's annoying. Don't get me <laughs> wrong. You, I'm not it like. It just looks a little, yeah. No, it's it's, it's odd. It, I mean, it's 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 a crappy situation for sure. Uh, and so I'm not just total Apple fanboy saying it's not a problem, but just given the design considerations, there's not much they could do. So it's, it's not, not a priority for them. Well, it's it's not even that it's just not a priority. It's again, it's that you know to maximize battery life and do everything else. There, there was just little they could do. If if they change the case and do other things, they could hey, just probably puncture some bloody holes it. into the glass. I'm good with that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So what, one of the things that we didn't see that I thought we would is I, I was certain that with a Retin display they'd want to show off FaceTime conference calling or multi-person FaceTime. Yeah. Thought that would have been a great because I always try to think what's Apple going to show in the commercials and Retina display no, makes a great commercial. <laughs> Yeah, but it's it's because the front facing camera sucks. Yeah, I, well, that's part of the reason. And but with LTE, I would have thought that you know it's it's super fast. They could have used that to demo so many things and make a great commercial. You're showing Granny and Auntie at the same time. The boys or the dogs playing. Yeah, maybe if they were able to do multi mul multiple person. But I mean, I think at the end of the day, you take a VGA video of somebody and put it on the Retina display, and it pretty much sucks. I mean, that, the <laughs> they're not going to want to show it. Really care? They, they, I think they could still do conferencing in a, it, with a software update. Yeah, so they can. They can do it. I'm so, just saying it wouldn't make for a great demo. I mean, well, they're, yeah, they're, they, they there's... had a problem with dictation. They're not gonna. They're not gonna be trying to do anything else that's gonna be more with all those damn bloggers and their MiFi's. Yeah, and, and look yeah. at look at the the picture they did of the Retina display compared to uh, an HD TV. So even like the amazing HD cameras that people are using for broadcast and other stuff, they don't even fill an iPad Retina display. So I'm not at all surprised they didn't do uh, uh, any kind of video or or that sort of demo. I mean, it's all pictures, you know, picture, picture, picture. Was there anything we missed, George? Any any other big uh, announcements that we've neglected to cover? Um. Hotspot. Um, yeah, iPad is good. I, I I am very happy that it's getting a hotspot. I missed having a hotspot on my iPad just because I have a data plan and I'd like to be able to use it when I want to. It's it's called a resolutionary device. Some people have been making fun of that. Yeah, that was a little uh, <clears throat> on the hot, hotspot thing. Sorry, uh, on the hotspot thing, I was kind of disappointed in myself. I bought the I bought the AT and T one because we do get generally better AT and T here in Texas. And uh, then I thought, geez, I have an AT&T iPhone. If I need to tether, I can just choose between whichever is giving the better signal. I was, I was kind of ticked off that I didn't think of that before I, I purchased it. Because yeah. now you, you have all these different options. You have all these devices with you at all times. You can choose what 3G connectivity. The um, app download limit's been raised from 20 megabytes to 50 megabytes. App Cubby noticed that very quickly. Um, Mark Edwards from Bajango, who also from the the Iterate podcast, did the math, and he thought 60 megabytes would be the best. Is that a concern of yours, David, with universal apps having Retina iPad graphics now that people aren't going to impulse buy on data? Yeah, and, and you know that that is a big problem, and and for people who don't maybe haven't dug into that issue. Um, with a universal app, um, it, it's a single um, binary for, um, and, and now it's going to be for the the original 320 by 480 screen, the Retina iPhone, the original iPad, and now the new iPad. And so you have four sets of, of icons, four sets of default images, four sets of UI, 
Um, so it can get big very quick. And, and so the real problem for developers is that if, if you're out and about and, and Tweetbot actually, and, and Paul Haddad was saying uh, earlier this week, you know, it's really smart of them to, to not do universal app because if you're at the ballpark and you're, you know, tweeting about the, the game and your buddy's like, Hey, check out, you know, Tweetbot for, for iPhone. If you can't download that because it's a universal app and the iPad resources are so intense that it's over 50 megs, I mean, you know, that, that is a, a very valid concern for developers that, that, you know, for people not to be able to, um, to, to download on impulse your app. And, and I, I think, you know, we're <laughs> even, even with the, the, the limit raised to 50 megabytes, I think we're going to see a lot more developers choosing to not do universal apps unless it's just a really simple app or, or an app that doesn't have a lot of custom UI. And then a, a secondary consideration is that 50 megs on a, on a bad 3G connection, I mean, we can talk about the, the, the um, 4G LTE iPad, but at the end of the day, you know, people are downloading these apps on their 3GS over at and yeah. crappy 3G connection. And it's the same app, whether you're downloading the app on the 4G LTE iPad or whether you're downloading on your old 3GS. And so that's going to be a pretty bad experience for you. You're on users. edge. <laughs> yeah, sitting there on edge trying to download 50 megs. So, you know, that's still even a consideration there. It's like, okay, even if we can fit a universal app into 45 megs or 40 megs even, do we want our, our potential customers to have that poor experience of trying to download our app at the grocery store because somebody showed them a you know grocery app or or at the ballpark tweeting or I mean there's so many scenarios where you know you see this cool app that a friend is using and you want to download it and it's a pretty crappy experience to to start downloading and be like you know if it finishes like the next day or you have to wait. Till I you was know, with Georgia it. and she was yelling at me because typing she she doesn't believe that typing notes is as good as handwriting notes so I wanted to be a jackass and download a handwriting notes app like a note shelf. And I went to do it just to be sarcastic, and it wouldn't download because it was too big. <laughs> there you so go. it totally ruined. Oh, you didn't tell me then, did you? No, I kept my mouth shut like a smart man. <laughs> <laughs> um, Apple's pre-ordering Georgia is not going smoothly again. A lot of people can't get in. A lot of people can't even get to the store. Can't get their orders finished. I think we've come to expect this now, though. I, I think it actually increases the buzz that people are all excited that they have to get it now. You know, who knows? They might even constrain it just to to increase our stress levels and make us have to <laughs> make go the store work talk. worse. <laughs> the frenzy is part of the fun. I don't know, though. I mean, I I, I bet there were some some uh, server engineers and, and some web guys at Apple freaking out. And 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 the funny thing <laughs> is, same sure. same thing with like supply and demand stuff. It's like this has happened before. You know, it's not the first time around the ballpark. So. As as they say on Battlestar, like you know, it's happened before. It'll. Happen. <laughs> but if you sat like so, that there is Apple. But if you saturate a hub, like if you get so many people, like remember yeah. the um, the keynote a couple of years ago when it took down two AOL data centers. I mean, there, there's a certain part where internet infrastructure becomes a problem. Well, but that's the thing. So Apple knows this is coming. Apple knows they're going to continue to to have these kind of crazy launch events, and they they could have staggered the. Um, the pre-ordering, they could have said, you know, pre-orders in the U.S. today, pre-orders international rolling out tomorrow. I mean, they could have done a lot of things differently. So it really makes me think they that they thought they had the problem nailed down. Well, the and Canadian store to, didn't have a problem. The U.S. store I couldn't get to. The Canadian store was fine. Well, there, there you go. So I, I think they thought they had the problem solved. And once again, it just, it's just been insane. I mean, every single site I saw uh, the Next Web, Engadget, I saw a bunch of people saying that this was like record traffic days for them. And so if you think about how much these sites have grown over the last few years, and then this is the single greatest day above the 4S, above, yeah. you know, all the other hype events and everything else. It's just, just a, there's a lot of people following this stuff now. So, okay. I well, let me ask the most important questions that there are. Um, David, black or white? <laughs> black, of course. Why is it so distracting? I hate it. Yeah. I'm I'm getting black. I, I I stagger. So my i my original yeah. iPad is black. iPad two is white, so I can tell them apart quickly at a glance. So iPad new iPad is going to be black, so I can tell them apart again. And are either of you going to pre-order or line up? I'm lining up. Oh, I already pre-ordered. Black sixty-four gig four G LTE AT and It's the no. first time I've ever gone all out, actually. I've always tried to buy the 16 gig Wi-Fi, 
and I, and both times um, they were sold out, and so I had I was forced to get the 32. Uh, but as an iPhone develop as an iOS developer, I know I'm gonna buy every uh, device that comes out, and so I typically just get a cheap one because I know I'm getting the new one in a year. Uh, but this time with the 4G LTE, I was like, okay, this this is gonna be a great device for the next you know three or four years. The new Retina display, you know, I'm kind of thinking how how are they gonna get this? How are they gonna take this? that much further than it is. And so, you know, I finally decided to go ahead and just splurge and, and go all out on it. So, Georgia, I have an even more important question. <clears throat> okay. Uh, also, Georgia has to line up because she's a blogger, so she <laughs> it, it's predetermined. It's, it's part of the fun. Um, this is my recommendation. I want to know if either of you guys agree or disagree with this. If you don't have an iPad yet, this is a fantastic iPad to get. If you have an iPad 1, it's a very good upgrade. If you have an iPad 2, unless you specifically want one of these new features, like you, you, you're you an artist and you want the Retina display, or you you want to be an iPad tourist and take pictures or whatever, it's it's okay, but it's not a necessary upgrade. Um, and If you're a geek, you have to buy it because you're a geek. I think that's... I'm going necessary upgrade on this. It, it, the, what what the, is the feature that makes it necessary? The Retina display. I, th I mean, that's just so, I mean, think about all the things you do on the iPad, at least for me. I mean, I really spend uh, a, a, the largest portion of time um, on Twitter, on um, a Flipboard, and apps like that. And so to me, the Retina display is just huge. I actually and, and I had... think for a lot of people it's going to be similar because if you think about you know even even in the <clears throat> in the keynote um, um, Tim Cook was highlighting you know these are all the things people use it for and as email and all these things and and I, you know I'll have to go back and look at the I'm going to watch the whole keynote uh, tonight but I'm pretty sure every single thing he mentioned as like this is what people tell us they love the iPad for is going to benefit from the Retina display so that's why I have to go. Um, um, Necessary must upgrade. upgrade. So yeah. here, I have a everything but dictation. Here's a question too: Is Apple going to continue to use the standard size iPad apps at you know double chunky fuzzy resolution on an iPad on a new iPad, or are they going to finally let you use the Retina graphics from the iPad from the iPhone? Well, they're going to let you use the Retina. I think they're going to let you use the Retina graphics, but then it's going to still look like crap compared to a native iPad app. I use I use TweetSpeaker on my iPad quite often. Nice. Yeah. And well, that, that's a topic we didn't get to, a topic for another time. But, you know, I think I've thought a lot about TweetSpeaker and whether it makes sense on the iPad. And, you know, for, for listening to tweets, it, it you know, to me, it feels like such a mobile use case and makes so much sense on the iPhone. And so we haven't done a, an iPad version specifically because of that. And I think it's very similar for Siri. It's like, you know, dictation helps a lot when you're on the go. And yeah. all the times I've even tried to use Siri, it's like I'm in the car, I want to text my wife, I'm, you know, walking or otherwise, you know, uh, not wanting to stand there and type. And so all those use cases where Siri, if it worked, um, would be like incredible and magical. It's not quite <laughs> the same for the iPad because, and, and it goes back to your your uh, iPad tourist video uh, thing, Georgia. You know, <laughs> if you're standing there <laughs> using dies. Siri, on, yeah. If you're standing there using Siri on your on your iPad, how much worse is that? And awkward <laughs> is that? Even more so than the iPhone. So. Just keep walking. Don't look at the man. Don't look at the man. <laughs> Don't say a thing. You ran a poll, Georgia, uh, asking if people were getting the new iPad, and but we're an iPhone and iPad enthusiast site, so our audience, yes, we do have our share of. You know, Mobile Nation's Android, BlackBerry fans, whatever. But on our site, 34% said, yes, they had me at Retina. 7% said, probably, they're going to decide when it's available. 13% said, maybe, they still want to look it over and consider it. 10% said, unlikely, didn't really wow them. And another whopping 34% said, no, not worth it, which shocked me. I didn't think that, I didn't think any self-respecting iMore reader would say, would say totally not worth it. No. Something yeah. like Seth did with the iPad 2, you mean? Yeah. I'm just saying. <laughs> so that you're saying that 34% is Seth voting over and over again. Exactly. Uh -huh. Well, the nice thing is that for everyone that has accessories, I would assume with the size being almost exactly the same with the difference being 0.02 inches in the uh, the depth. Yeah. Um, that all of your accessories should work and function exactly the same. The super tight skins might have a little bit of a trouble, um, but I, I think almost everything else will work. Which you said we'll else test will it. Pretty much fit again. Point six mil millimeters. Yeah, that's that's point pretty oh, slow. I have it as point oh three. That's inches. Uh, in millimeters, is point yeah. six. 
Um, yeah. So, and it's slightly heavier than the iPad Two, but and Apple had Honestly, that was a problem. IPad, so. That was a problem with the white iPhone, though, is that Apple gives you tolerances, and this should fit within the tolerances. But sometimes case makers don't follow the Apple tolerances. So if they cut stuff, uh, I, I've got to mention this. We've got to wrap it up, but I, I have to mention this, and I have to give this to Georgia to make fun of. Uh, Samsung PR immediately blasted out Galaxy Note 10.1 stylus versus a new iPad, and it turns out that everything that requires a Samsung-made stylus works better on a Galaxy Note than it does on an iPad 2. Um, if you want to view two apps at the same time with a footnote saying that the apps must be optimized for simultaneous viewing, uh, if you want to use precision writing or drawing, um, although they do note that you can buy a stylus for the iPad, but they're considering that an extra feature not, not built in. Um, they, they, they want you to know that if, if, you, if you want a Samsung stylus, you should use a Samsung tablet, basically. It's well, why don't Did I just buy the, that Samsung stylus and use it on my iPad? It's it's design. It's like a Wacom I'm stylus. Just, it's designed. Yeah, I'm 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 just. Messing but we are going to get Bluetooth 4.0 stylus styluses. So that in itself seems like a, an absolutely ridiculous argument. Just because it's not glued onto your iPad, help buy one, get some double sided tape, and stick <laughs> it onto your iPad. If that's a huge issue, if that's going to make or break you. Then there's a whole bunch of other issues. There and now. John is pointing out that unlike a lot of the Samsung tablets announced, the iPad is the new iPad is actually shipping. Well, and the cool thing about the iPad is is, is all the accessories. And I was talking about this with somebody the other day. Um, uh, we only have one computer in our home, and my wife uh, really hassles me about uh, how little time she gets on on the on her MacBook Pro. And so a while back, I bought her a, a little keyboard for her um, iPad. And, and, and the thing is that that was really the main thing that she wanted the, the, the computer for is to just quickly hash out some emails. And so the iPad can kind of become a lot of these things people are complaining it isn't through third party accessories. And like the, the 10, um, the 10, what is it? 10 one, what's the name of that company? 10 one, 10 one design, uh, 10 one design is releasing a pressure sensitive Bluetooth four stylus yep. that that is going to blow away between the retina display, the touch, the improved touch sensitivity of, of the iPad, um, the better software, everything else. There's about for five somebody, of those coming out different companies. Yeah. So, so it for people really who good. care about a stylus, it, they can go buy a stylus for 50, 60 bucks. And between that iPad with that stylus is Ten times, a hundred times better than this silly Samsung thing that they're touting. So, I think it's Jonathan, ridiculous. Jonathan Fingus from the chat room says that the stylus doesn't even have a place to stay. No, the smaller the note it does, but not the bigger to. one. Which is crazy. The smaller one has a place to put the stylus, but not the bigger and one. The big one doesn't. So I'm no. going to lose it anyways, as I do with everything else yes. that's not already attached to my to my tablet. Uh, I, I got people upset because I said that Samsung was poised to sell tens of dozens of them, and that, that apparently <laughs> did 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 you make some people upset? Yeah, are you gonna get some angry tweets? Yeah, I might have. I I, I could talk about this all night, and I literally think I probably am. But uh, we are we are going to wrap it up. Um, David, overall impressions of the event, just the broad strokes. Um, as I said, pretty incredible. I'm 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 very impressed. Apple. Um, you know, they, they take, they take bigger steps here and there, but they have just been relentless since the first iPhone with iterating, 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 iterating. And, and this new iPad is, is pretty incredible. And, you know, I'm a huge Apple fanboy. you know, I make my living on this stuff. So, you know, you can take it all with a grain of salt, but I'm, I'm very impressed. And, <clears throat> You know, on a, on a deeper level, though, I mean, I, because my entire livelihood is dependent on this stuff, I mean, I, I think about it, you know, is Apple going to stay up? You know, should I really consider Windows Mobile and, and Android and other things like that? So when I see such a strong product come out, when I see Apple able to keep it at $499 versus pushing to $599 or higher, um, it, it really makes me more comfortable um, as an iOS developer seeing Apple execute at this level. And uh, Georgia, was it magicaler for you? Uh, it was a little bit more lackluster, a little bit less um, clean, more, less a little bit less exuberance. They tried for exuberance. There was cute. They made a few cute, quippy jokes, but they kind of fell short. But as for the tablet itself, I'm excited for it. I think that they did a good job with that. And 
they're going to have to keep on practicing in order to bring it up to speed. But, you know, they don't have Steve at the helm anymore. So I think they did a good enough job. They did a great job, except for the fact of, uh, of the act they had to follow. I mean, that, exactly. exactly. If you've ever had to sit through a keynote by like Howard Stringer or uh, Ralph De La Vega or anything, I mean, these guys were, to, to quote Scott Forstall, were blow away. It's just, you don't follow Elvis that easily. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, I thought it was uh, was a great event. Um, I, I was worried they wouldn't do Retina Display, the way David said. I was worried that maybe they wouldn't do LTE. Um, I was worried that they wouldn't hit the points that they did, but I think they hit every major step. And yes, we expected them, but that that sort of sets an expectation, and I think they met it. So I was um, I was really happy. I can't wait to get this tablet. I, I was a designer before I became a blogger, so... Uh, this the idea of having pixels that dense at a screen that size just makes my eyes blast backwards through my skull. Are those well, unopened iPads behind you? Uh, no, those are <laughs> those are just previous previously <laughs> owned iPads. He keeps so, like, all the boxes. boxes and boxes of uh, yeah for fa for <laughs> fake unboxings. Um, nice. Yeah, and we're actually going to do a few, and we're going to invite David on a few. We're going to do some iterate roundtables soon, discussing the various issues. Um, I don't know if you, if, I don't want to put you on a spot, David, but we we are going to invite you to to, hey, to some of them. I didn't you spend a thousand dollars. You know we're live. I, I didn't spend a thousand dollars on all this stupid podcast equipment to not accept those kind of invitations. <laughs> all right, awesome. <laughs> if the timing works out, I'll definitely be there. All right, awesome, uh, Georgia. Well, we're with with that, David, I would like to say thank you so much for joining us today. It was a blast. Thank you, guys. It was, it was really, really fun. And how can everyone find you? Um, I, I've I've seen the little uh, lower third thing, uh, appcubby.com, and on Twitter, appcubby or um, Dr. Bernard. AppCubby, I don't tweet a lot, um, but it's more just kind of product news and stuff. If you want the total inside baseball stuff, uh, follow at Dr. Bernard. Thank you so much. And Renee. Yes. You survived today. I, I It's not over yet. I still got to do a heck of a lot of blogging tonight. <laughs> oh. You well, need to take better care of yourself, can, man. can I just give kudos? Tell I just want to get, before I say anything about me, I just want to give kudos to the iMore team because we had three of us live doing the podcast. We had eight people in the back just, just blogging their hearts out. We had people proofing and, and, and fixing and imaging and the entire Mobile Nations team was mobilized and they were they were uh they were awesome. I'm really, really proud of how they did it today. Kudos to them. Well, Renee, why don't you tell us how everyone can bug you while you're still trying to get all of the job done? Uh you can find me at Renee Ritchie on Twitter, plus Renee Ritchie on Google Plus uh if you're an Android user. Um or you can find me at imore.com. Android user, are there a lot of Android users watching this? Uh, they uh, I get the email. I rate I rate angry emails. So. <laughs> Hi Phil. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm actually I, when 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 ice cream sandwich hits fifty percent adoption rate, I'm going to be a lot more interested in Android, and we'll see how long that takes. We and, I, I think that. Android is a really interesting platform. Um, for me, it's all about can I run a business, and and so far the answer seems to be no on Android, especially just at the level I work. So we're going to do a show. We're going to do an iterate about that now, David. Too. Thank you. Nice. Awesome. And I'm Georgia, and you can find me on Twitter at Georgia TIPB and also on the website, so www.imore.com. And you can find all of us on Twitter at imore. You can also email us at podcast at imore.com or leave a comment when the web show goes live. We're here every Wednesday night at 6 p.m. Pacific and 9 p.m. Eastern at www.imore.com slash live for all our podcasts, audio, and video, including iPhone Live, iPad Live, Zen and Tech, Super Functional, Iterate, and much, much more. See mobilenations.com slash shows. If you have not already, please subscribe in iTunes and leave a rating. It helps people find us. And thanks to the iMore iPhone Accessory Store for sponsoring the podcast. And, of course, to everyone that showed up live. Take a look before it's cut. We absolutely love you. So come and join us for the fun. Nice. All right, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Thanks, it was Bye, fun. Bye, everyone.